Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. Today is day 12 of Hidden Figures, and today's Hidden Figure is Ella Baker, born December 13th, 1903, and died December 13th, 1986, who was a Black American civil rights and human rights activist. She was largely a behind-the-scenes organizer whose career spanned more than five decades, and she played a major role in three of the 20th century's most influential civil rights groups, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, or the SCLC, and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or the SNCC, pronounced SNCC. She advocated widespread local action as a means of social change, and her emphasis on a grassroots approach to the struggle for equal rights influenced the growth and success of the civil rights movement of the mid-20th century. In New York City and the South, she worked alongside some of the most noted civil rights leaders of the 20th century, including Thurgood Marshall and Martin Luther King Jr. She also mentored many emerging activists such as Diane Nash, Stokely Carmichael, and Rosa Parks. Baker criticized professional leaders, instead promoting a decentralized hierarchy, grassroots organizing, radical democracy, and the ability of the oppressed to advocate for themselves. Baker has been called one of the most important American leaders of the 20th century and perhaps the most influential woman in the civil rights movement. She's also known as the mother of the civil rights movement. Ella Josephine Baker was born on December 13, 1903 in Norfolk, Virginia. Her father worked on a steamship line that sailed out of Norfolk and her mother took in boarders to earn extra money. After a 1910 race riot during which whites attacked black workers from the shipyard, her mother decided to take the family back to North Carolina. Ella was seven when they returned to her mother's rural hometown near Littleton, North Carolina, where her mother's family had worked the land as slaves for generations. As a child, Baker grew up listening to her grandmother tell stories about slavery, including being whipped for refusing to marry another slave of her master's choosing. This resulted in Baker gaining a sense of social justice at an early age. Ella attended Shaw University in Raleigh, North Carolina, and graduated with valedictorian honors, later moving to New York to work as editorial assistant at the Negro National News. In 1931, Baker became the national director of the Young Negroes Cooperative League, or the YNCL, which sought to develop Black economic power through collective networks and cooperative groups that would pool community resources. The end goal was to create a small, interlocking system of cooperative economic economic societies throughout the U.S. Baker also taught courses in consumer education, labor history, and African history and founded the Negro History Club at the Harlem Library. She immersed herself in the socio-political climate of 1930s Harlem and befriended future notable figures like a young John Henry Clark and Polly Murray, who was another previous hidden figure. If you guys haven't heard of her, I will include a link to my previous video on her in the description box. In December 1940, Baker started working at the NAACP as an assistant field secretary. As the organization was based in New York, Baker traveled widely on its behalf in the South, recruiting members, raising money, and organizing local chapters. She was named director of branches in 1943 and became the NAACP's highest ranking woman. She pushed the NAACP to decentralize its leadership structure, trying to emphasize a group-centered ideology as she believed that the strength of an organization grew from the bottom up and not the top down. Baker also despised elitism. While traveling throughout the South on the NAACP's behalf, she met hundreds of Black people, establishing lasting relationships with them and recruiting many to join the NAACP. Known for writing personalized thank you notes to all, she slept in their homes, ate at their tables, and earned their trust. And many of these members also opened their homes later on to other activists like MLK as they traveled through the South. Baker essentially formed a network of people who would be important in the continued fight for civil rights for decades to come. Between 1944 and 1946, she directed leadership conferences in several major cities such as Chicago and Atlanta, and in 1946, she left her director position with the NAACP to work on local school desegregation and police brutality issues with the New York branch. She became president of the New York NAACP in 1952, saying her top priority was to give women more power in the organization. 
1953, she resigned from the presidency to run for the New York City Council, but was unsuccessful. In 1955, Baker co-founded the organization In Friendship to raise financial aid for the civil rights movement in the South. And in January 1957, Baker went to Atlanta to attend a conference aimed at developing a new regional organization to build on the success of the Montgomery bus boycott in Alabama. The result of this conference was the formation of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1957, of which she was a founding member. The SCLC aimed to coordinate reform efforts throughout the South using nonviolent actions to bring about social progress and racial justice for Southern Blacks. Baker was the first staff person hired for the SCLC as its associate director. Martin Luther King Jr., whom she did not like, served as the SCLC's first president. The conference's first project was the 1958 Crusade for Citizenship, a voter registration campaign to increase the number of registered Black American voters for the 1958 and 1960 elections. Baker worked closely with Southern civil rights activists in Georgia, Alabama, and Mississippi, developing a strategy that included education, lectures in churches, and efforts to establish grassroots centers to stress the importance of the vote. Many of their tactics are still used today as they laid the groundwork to build a mass movement for the vote across the South. After John Tilley resigned as director of the SCLC, Baker lived and worked in Atlanta for two and a half years as interim executive director. As time went on, Baker became disillusioned with the SCLC as she wanted to practice a more radically democratic organization model, wherein people in the field were more important than directors. She was a fan of the idea of participatory democracy, which called for a minimization of hierarchy in the organization and direct action as an answer to the intellectual detachment, love that phrase, of many leaders. Baker ultimately advocated for a more collectivist model of leadership over what she called the prevailing messianic style of the period. Like, we don't need no messiah. <laughs> and her philosophy was power to the people. In 1960, Baker persuaded the SCLC to invite Southern University students to the Southwide Youth Leadership Conference at her alma mater, Shaw University. At this meeting, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, or SNCC, was formed. SNCC became the most active organization in the deeply oppressed Mississippi Delta, and following the conference at Shaw, Baker resigned from the SCLC in order to support SNCC. Baker was one of SNCC's highly revered adult advisors, known as the godmother of SNCC. In 1961, Baker persuaded SNCC to form two wings, one wing for direct action and the second wing for voter registration. With Baker's help, SNCC, along with the Congress of Racial Equality, or CORE, coordinated the region-wide Freedom Rides of 1961. They also expanded their grassroots movement for land sovereignty amongst Black sharecroppers, tenant farmers, and others throughout the South. Some of the SNCC members and future leaders that Baker mentored and influenced included Julian Bond, Diane Nash, and Stokely Carmichael. Through SNCC, Baker's ideas of group-centered leadership and the need for radical democratic social change spread throughout the student and university movements of the 1960s. These ideas influenced a wide range of radical and progressive groups that would form in the late 60s and 1970s. In 1964, Baker helped organize the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party, or MFDP, as an alternative to the all-white Mississippi Democratic Party. She worked as a coordinator of the Washington office of the MFDP and accompanied a delegation of the MFDP to the 1964 National Democratic, Democratic excuse me, Party Convention in Atlantic City, New Jersey. After MFDP delegates challenged the pro-segregationist all-white official delegation, they forced a rule change to allow women and minorities to sit as delegates at the Democratic National Convention. As the politics of the later 1960s shifted towards a more black power ideology that also preached armed self-defense, Baker approved of the change. She believed that black power was a relief from the stale and unmoving demands and language of the more mainstream civil rights groups at that time. Those were her exact words. Her friend and biographer, Joanne Grant, also wrote that Baker, who always said that she would never be able to turn the other cheek, 
turned a blind eye to the prevalence of weapons. While she herself would rely on her fists, she had no qualms about target practice. In 1967, Baker returned to New York City where she continued her activism. An anti-capitalist, Baker supported socialism, and in 1972, she traveled the country in support of the Free Angela campaign, demanding the release of activist and writer Angela Davis, who had been arrested as a communist. While Baker maintained a relatively low profile, the FBI, through its COINTELPRO program, also deployed covert surveillance activities against her. She remained an activist until her death on December 13, 1986, on her 83rd birthday. Several biographies have been written about Baker, including Barbara Ransby's Ella Baker in the Black Freedom Movement, a Radical Democratic Vision, published in 2003. Her papers are held by the New York Public Library, and she's received a multitude of awards, including being inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in 1994 and honored on a U.S. postage stamp in 2009. The Ella Baker Center for Human Rights, a nonprofit strategy and action center based in Oakland, California, was founded and named for her in 1996, along with the Ella Baker School in New York City. In 2003, the Ella Jo Baker Intentional Community Cooperative, a 15-unit co-housing community, began living together in a renovated house in Washington, D.C. The Ella J. Baker House, established in 2005, is a community center that supports at-risk youth in Boston. And I'm going to close out with a quote from Ella Baker where she said, You didn't see me on television. You didn't see news stories about me. The kind of role that I tried to play was to pick up pieces or put together pieces out of which I hoped organization might come. My theory is strong people don't need strong leaders. And that's Ella Baker, a hidden figure. As always, I will include more links and information on Ella Baker in the description box. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Food for thought as always. See you guys tomorrow with another hidden figure. Peace.